I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Ooh. I will say My God in Him will I trust. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. All around me, I see the light of hope, free from bondage. Chains of the dark, surely goodness and mercy will lead me all the way. This is my prayer every day. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God and Him. say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. All around me, All around me I see the light of hope, free from bondage, free from bondage. and the chains of the dark, surely goodness and mercy will lead me all the way. This is my prayer every day, every day. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. And my fortress, my God in Him will I trust, oh I will. And my fortress, my God in Him will I trust, yeah. Lord Praise is our refuge Lord. and He's our fortress. We trust in Him. He's our shelter and our protector. He's our provider. Wow, those are powerful promises that God has made to us. In times of trouble and whatever situations are going around us, maybe evil is going around <coughs> us, maybe bad news is surrounding you. You can be assured that God promises to be with you and protect you from all harm and danger. Praise the Lord. That's Praise right. Praise the Lord. And the best part about it is that you can be assured that wherever you go, God has His angels all around you. Yeah, that's wonderful. And they're protecting you, they're keeping you from all harm and danger. Mm -hmm. And this is the verse that we got the song from. It's in um, Psalm 91 and we're going to read, we'll read from verse 1 and 2. It's so interesting, this psalm. There's a lot of goodness when you meditate the Word of God and begin to see that mm. these promises that are in the Word are for you. And yeah. you can apply these promises into your life on a daily basis. Mm. So today, even if you're struggling with um, having this assurance that God is keeping you safe and protecting you, well, that's exactly what we want to talk about in this episode is God's protection upon your life. Yeah. His protection. Right. Let's read that uh, psalm from uh, scriptures from Psalm 91. We're going to start reading from verse 1. It says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Mm. What a powerful verse of scripture that is. Verse 2 says, I will say that the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. He is my God whom I will trust. Mm. You see, the, the psalmist is saying here, I will say of the Lord, I will proclaim that He is my refuge and He is my fortress. You know, what is amazing about the Word of God is that the promises that are in this Word are for us to speak over our lives. Because the Bible tells us in another place in Proverbs, it says that death and life are in the power of the tongue, right? Yeah. So the, the power is in the words that you are speaking on a daily basis. Right. You see, like for example, when you're maybe walking down the street, you know, you can be saying these promises. Lord, you said you are my refuge and my fortress, yeah. right? Instead of saying, I don't know what's going to happen today. It's not safe. You know, things are going to fall apart probably. And I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do if something happens to me or something like that. Yeah. But those are death-filled words. And you don't want things like that to happen in your yeah. life, yeah. right? You want to speak life words such as what, what verse 2 says, God is my refuge and my fortress. Mm. right god is waiting to protect you right but he has the he the words that you speak are what give him the power to to allow the angels to work in on behalf of your life mm. that's and so important that all goes back to who we are in christ yeah. because see once we receive jesus as our lord and savior he put his spirit on the inside of us and plus you know before we knew the lord we were so used to and it was a habit to normally speak words like I'm afraid and I'm alone, nobody's mm. there with me. And now what we need to do according to the Bible is renew and reprogram our mind, reprogram our way of thinking. Because God, you know, <clears throat> the reason we're saying those words are death filled is because they produce. Mm. You know, when you say I'm afraid, you know, you're actually giving Satan a legal right to put fear into your mind and to bring situations that will cause you to be more afraid. But God loves you so much that He has filled this book with promises and also He has given us the Holy Spirit to remind us and give us an assurance that He will never leave us nor forsake us. Mm. So when we say, instead of speaking, you know, I'm afraid, I'm alone, I don't know what's going to happen, is because those words are powerful and you don't want those things to happen in your life. Mm. You want words like this, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High yeah. God protects me. God is my refuge and my fortress. You want these type of things to happen in your life. You mm. want to see God's protection all around That's you. That's right. And protection is something in this world that we really need, um, you know, on a daily basis. Yeah. And one, like we saw some of the promises of God earlier was like we saw how healing is God's promise yeah. and how um, God wants to give you an assurance of righteousness where you can stand freely in His presence without condemnation. Right. And along those promises, we see that protection is one of God's promises, mm. right? God wants to protect you in this life, yeah. right? When you're, when you're walking down the street, when, you, when you're in your house, when you, when you leave your house, God, he, he wants, he's, he's always there with you. Yeah. But the, the important thing is that we keep our words right, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of using words and saying, I don't know what's going to happen to me today. You know, let's just see what the day brings. Yeah. Life is just, you don't have no assurance. Yeah. You can have an assurance that what God has said in his word, he will fulfill. Mm. In, he will fulfill it in your life. Yeah. And there's another promise. I was just reading this <clears throat> in Psalm 9, chapter 9, verse 9 and 10. It says, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. Mm. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name, they that know the Lord's name, will put their trust in him. Mm. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Mm. That's a wonderful promise. That is. The Lord will never forsake those who seek him. Mm. Protection is a promise of God that you yeah. can have. And another verse in the same psalm, we're going back to Psalm 91. Now, we see that verse 2, as we read, it says, I will say of the Lord, right? I will say. In other words, not just keeping this in your heart or just keeping it in the book. It's important that you say it out of your mouth on a constant I basis. Will say. 
I will say, Lord, you are protecting me. Mm. You have, you are a refuge. Refuge is like a place of safety. So what God is saying is, I'm going to keep you safe in this life, mm. right? My God in whom I will trust. See, saying the word is what releases the power of God, right? God can actually confirm his word as you say it, yeah. right? As you say it. Now let's see what verse 11 says. How is God protecting us in this life? Okay, let's see what verse 11 says. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Mm. Let's read that again. It's so interesting. Yeah. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Mm. See, God has sent angels all around you. Yeah. Right? You don't have to see them. Right? A lot of things that you don't need to see, but they are there. Yeah. See, the angels of God are going to protect you. You know, when you leave your, when you're, maybe when you're, you know, coming out of your house, you can say, Father, I thank you this day that your angels are all around me. I don't have to be afraid of what's going to happen mm. to me because you have promised in your word, your angels are around me. And even when you're traveling on the road, yeah. you know, you, this is a good promise to say, Lord, thank you for your angels. Mm. Angels are very powerful they beings. Are. And they are spirits. You don't have to see them, like Shama said, but they are always there waiting for you to speak God's word and mm. then they work on your behalf. And, and it's amazing how one angel is so powerful. That's right. Right? Yeah. God has angels, but if you just think of one angel, I mean, there is, that one angel can just take care of you. Mm. But God has said, I'm going to give angels, right, yeah. charge over you yeah. to keep you and protect you. And even as we see, continue on talking about protection and how God wants to keep you safe in this life right? Mm. There's a good example in the Bible, a story. We may be familiar with this, but it's, it's about the story of Daniel. And I'm just going to tell it to you um, in a nutshell. We see that Daniel, um, yeah, we should go to that scripture. It's in, we're not going to read everything, but let's just see what we can get from it. So we're going to Daniel chapter 6. Now Daniel, he was a very, um, I would say, ex like the Bible says, an excellent man, mm. right? He was a man of an excellent spirit. He, he, everything that he did was very successful and he loved God very much. And um, we see that he was very much, the, fa the king had lots of favor towards him, right? Yeah. Showed him lots of favor because of the, he was so excellent in all his work and so there were people around there who were jealous of Daniel because he was very, he had an excellent spirit and in things that he did, he was so good. So they were jealous. And the problem was they couldn't find anything wrong with him. They couldn't find any fault with him because he was just so good, nothing yeah. wrong to find. So they decided that they were going to um, find something wrong with the God that he was worshiping, Yeah. right? They decided and they said, okay, since we can't find any other fault with Daniel, we are going to make this law. And this law says that nobody can worship any other God except for the king or write a petition to any other God except to the king. Okay. Now, what's interesting is Daniel heard these words. Okay. He knows now. And, and what's, what's even worse was they passed that law and they said, if you worship any other God or any other any other God, you would be thrown into the den of lions. Yeah. Well, that's horrible, mm. right? That would just put anybody... That that's would how say, much they hated that's him. That's how much they hated him. They wanted yeah. to put a den of lions out of everything. They wanted to do a <laughs> den of lions, yeah. right? And so now this is the law that has been passed. And we see verse 10 is so interesting. This is what it says. It says, when Daniel knew that now, so the king had signed this decree, okay? He had signed it, which means if you, for the next, this was for the next 30 days, they had made this law. And if any, nobody could worship any other God. So the king signed this and Daniel knew it. And it says in verse 10, Daniel, when he knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. That is so amazing to me. Mm -hmm. That is just so interesting. He heard that the law was passed, but he, did, he decided, I'm not going to fear man. I'm not going to fear what man says to me. 
right? I, I've been worshipping God and I'm not mm. going to stop just because they're telling me to mm. stop. Even though he knew that uh, they had a den of lions prepared. Because he knew his wisdom, the ability mm. to do whatever he was doing in the kingdom came from the Lord. Yeah. And he was not going to forsake the Lord for uh, everything that God had done for him, providing him with wisdom, the skill and the excellent spirit and being with him. Yeah. God was always with Daniel. And so God, Daniel was not going to forsake the Lord mm. for that writing. Yeah. See, sometimes we need to think about this, you know. Daniel, he was not afraid. I mean, think about this, the lions in the den, right? And mm. they must have been really hungry lions. I'm sure. Yeah. And so Daniel had all the more reason to be afraid and to quit mm. and say, Lord, I'm not going to worship you. I'm scared. I'm scared of these lions. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. He, in fact, it says he opened his windows, I guess. <laughs> he wanted them to hear that or see that he was one who... That's what he yeah. did as before. He didn't, yeah, he didn't want he didn't to change. change. He said, no, I've been worshipping God. I'm not going to change just because yeah. you all are telling me to. And they caught him when he was praying. And the king loved Daniel very much. But we see that he couldn't do anything mm -hmm. because he had signed the law and there was nothing else he could do about it. Yeah. And so they, but you know what is so interesting? The king saw so much of God in Daniel yeah. that he said in verse 16, this is Daniel chapter 6, verse 16, right? The king, he knew that and he said, Daniel, your God, whom you serve continually, He will deliver you. Amen. He will deliver you. The yeah. God that you are serving, He is going to set you free from mm. this den of lions. Yeah. Daniel was a man who was not afraid to share about God wherever he was. Mm. Even when people were jealous of him. And the king saw the God that Daniel worshipped. Mm. And he had so much of faith that even in the den of lions, God would deliver him. Yeah. What an awesome thing to see. <laughs> in fact, if you read the verses later, you find the king was the person who was unable to sleep yeah. you know, concerning yeah. this situation. Daniel, it doesn't say he was panicking, he was troubled mm. inside the lion's den. But the king was troubled. Yeah. He was afraid. He was afraid. Because he loved Daniel. He did. And he, he had so much of faith that God would deliver him somehow. Yeah. And so Daniel is put in the den of lions. And we see what's so amazing is that God sent his angel. Yeah. Right? See, that's the protection that we're talking about. Mm. God sent his angel and shut the mouth of the lions so yeah. that they could not harm Daniel. And then we see um, the next day, you know, just imagine, sometimes we read these as stories, but if you just think it's a real life situation that yeah. Daniel was facing, right. right? He's thrown into a den of lions. None of us would want that to happen to us, right? No. To be thrown into a den of lions. Yeah. But this man, he was in that den of lions and the angels were there to protect him. I think it says an angel of the Lord came and protected him. Yeah, it one, does. one angel mm. came and protected him. And verse 22, mm. if you read the verses before, it says the king, he came running to the den and he said, Daniel, he said, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, this is verse 20, is your God whom you serve continually able to deliver you from the lions? In fact, he came and expected Daniel to be alive. Yeah, yeah, right? well, yeah. He came, he came and expected Daniel to be because alive. Because he called out to Daniel. Yeah, he that's right. He didn't expect right. him to be dead. Yeah, he had mm. so much of faith in the God that Daniel served. Yeah, see, Daniel, he demonstrated and he manifested the God whom he served. Mm. That the king was able to notice this is a living God. Mm. This is not just a dead God that you're talking about, Daniel. And he came screaming and asked Daniel if God is able to save him. And then in verse 21, Daniel says, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth and they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocence he was found in me and also before you, O king, I have mm. done no hurt. I've done no hurt. God protects those people who are honest before him. And because you are his child, he loves you and he wants to protect you too, yeah. just like Daniel. And the angels came and protected him while he was in that den of lions. Yeah. In such a troubling situation where there's lions all around, God's angel came mm -hmm. and shut the mouth of the lions. Yeah, then, you know, this story is talking about physical, real lions. But maybe you're in a situation, maybe at work or maybe at home, and there are people who just hate you because they're jealous of you mm. and who speak accusing words against you. Yeah, and good. you can, just like Daniel, you can continue to serve the Most High God and mm. say, Lord, I'm not going to be moved by what these people say. They may be jealous of me, but because you are with me, 
you will protect me. I'm mm. going to continue to serve you just like Daniel. And God will protect you. That's God right. will protect you just like Daniel. He, he those The mouths of those people who are speaking against you, they, their mouths will be shut. That's and right. And you will be delivered. You will be delivered. Yeah. And in fact, Have don't, faith. Yeah, don't let your light um, be hid under a bushel when you are facing you know, things like that. When yeah. people are talking against you, just like Daniel was facing. When they were jealous of Daniel, we see how Daniel decided, I'm not going to change. Yeah. I'm going to trust in the Lord as I've always done it. Mm. And he believed the promise that God's angels would protect him. I believe he did. Yeah. I believe. I'm sure he did. That's he why did. He, he continued praising and worshipping the Lord as he mm. always did. Don't let life situations stop you, you know, from serving the Lord. You keep doing that and God will promise to deliver you from whatever it is that you're facing. Mm. You see, a king was able to see the God that Daniel served. So let your light shine even in the midst of situations like that. And today mm. we've been talking about protection and how God has his angels all around you to keep you safe. Yeah. You can have that assurance today and believe that when I leave my home, when, when I come back, when I'm walking on the street, those angels are all around me protecting me. Yeah. And, and maybe yeah. we can just, you know, I just want to read these promises that God has promised in His Word to protect us. Yeah. And two of these are from Isaiah and one is from Psalm. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not, I will mm. help you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have bought you back. I have called you by my name. You are mine. And when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the Amen. fires, and they shall not kindle you. That's right. In Psalm 118, the Lord says, Call upon the Lord. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do to me? That's right. So today you can believe that God wants to protect you and keep you safe from all harm and danger. Right. Believe that today and receive it in Jesus' name.